for you? It, it's, it's like getting your foot in the door. And we're hoping to be able to, to kick it wide open uh, so that it will lead to other things. Uh, right. Particularly things that will benefit because we, we, we think in terms of seven generations and uh, this young man, my number one great grandson, uh, I'm hopeful that by the time he gets to uh, college age that there will be some doors open where he will be able to get in there because right now, and I have paneled the uh, Maryland institutions to find out how many natives do they have on their campuses, whether it's Eastern Shore, Western Shore, Baltimore, or wherever. Uh, these land-grant colleges are supposed to be receptive, especially to minorities. So I'm trying to figure out why can't they tell me how many, and they can't, natives are on their campuses. And if not, why not? What's going on at the elementary, middle school, high school levels right. that they're not getting the rudimentary education they need to be able to qualify to get on those campuses? Because without that, we're stuck in the mud. Absolutely. You know, uh, we got plenty of chiefs, but we need some doctors and lawyers. <laughs> right, that's right, that's right. And so today's event marks perhaps an opportunity to begin introducing. Right, we need, we're trying to get beyond land acknowledgement. You know, what's next? Right. Uh, that's fine and dandy, but we don't want it just to be an opening statement for meetings and events. We want it to have some meaning. We want it to be somewhere in that mix of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion uh, that it will have meaning right. after the fact. So, you know, that's what we're pushing for, to get uh, beyond land uh, acknowledgement. What can people do to help move that forward? If they are in any way involved in higher education, if they know anybody that's involved in higher education, if they know anybody that works in the Maryland National Park and Planning, uh, because I'm, I'm still pushing for getting rid of the invisibility of Native people, both in the schools, because you know one of my things is you go into the schools, this young man doesn't see anything in his school that validates his presence. Right. There's everything else in there that validates everybody else's presence, but not his. You know, you'll see George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, etc., but nothing in the schools that give a young man like him pride in knowing that this system acknowledges his existence, that he's there. And that works all the way up through school, you know, through elementary on. And when you have that mindset that you're invisible, figuratively, then you become invisible literally. So yeah, that's something that we're fighting against, the fact that you look at the money being spent across this state for museums, and we keep getting told in it, well, you got the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. Right. Okay, then let's shut down all of the local museums if they have a huge ethnic museum in Washington, D.C. <laughs> you know, let's get rid of the art museums. Let's get rid of all the ethnic museums in the state of Maryland. If that's the reason that you're avoiding it with us, it's because we don't need it. You're being greedy. You got a big old national museum in DC. Right. But I'm fighting, and, and uh, there was a gentleman I met here the other day who I'll be in contact with to have that conversation with. Uh, the only way to become not invisible is to be visible. I talked with a senator about having some type of uh, statue after they took down the statue of Taney. Columbus is gone then why not have some type of uh, icon in Annapolis for people to see. He asked me, can somebody give him a painting or portrait they can hang in the Senate building? I had to stop myself from becoming furious. <laughs> you know, it, I felt like you're snubbing me. You're snubbing my culture. You know, right. that our presence isn't significant enough to have any type of a monument or statue in Maryland, outside, most people, tourists, don't go in the city building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they do go through those courtyards, you know, and it's fine. I go there and I sit and I see, oh God, you know, I'm terrible on names, uh, the Supreme Court Justice, right. Thurgood Marshall. Right. I go down the waterfront, I see, um, what's the Roots guy? Um, Alex Haley? Haley. Haley. Alex Haley. You know, I see all these icons there, and I used to see Taney, and there are other icons there, and I'm saying, why are natives absent in all of this? And uh, for somebody to tell me, well, it will hang up a picture. You know, I feel like, why don't you just slap me across the face right. now? You know, it's, uh, right. that's not what we're after. We right. need visibility so we're not invisible. Right. What can, work can people do to get 
connected with you and your organizations to be supportive? Oh, well, they can get in touch with me through, uh, I have a Facebook page, uh, through my email, which is my name, rico.newman at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, if they can write letters to their uh, local uh, uh, politicians, if they have connections with Merlin National Park and Planning, um, you know, all of that helps because, you know, people have even told me and have, well, why don't y'all do uh, civil disobedience? <laughs> we don't have the manpower. We don't have the people to make that kind of an impact to be effective. We can't stop anything from happening. We, if, we, if we stood in front of buses, they'd run over us because there's only, what, two or three people. Uh, you can't do civil disobedience with our population. We have maybe 12, 1,300 enrolled people. You'll probably get 5% of those say that they will participate. And then on the day of the event, right. good luck. Right. So, you know, it's no sense of us trying to go that route because we don't have the manpower to be able to do that. So we have to be able to influence those who are the influencers of right. policy, which is our politicians, right. that we are deserving. Right. And that to realize that without considering can we put them in or take them out of office. That that shouldn't be the the factor the, right. whether or not programs mm -hmm. and projects should go forward. Right. So you know that's that's what we're pushing. But if we can get the numbers, you know, if we can get the uh, assistance and cooperation from other communities to help us. Uh, but I know everybody is pushing uh, the, the agendas for their interests, and, and I have, and they should. And I'm not saying they should stop, but um, we're willing. The few of us, that, you know, we will do letters and send them to them. Just sign it and send it. Um, anything to get it going. Uh, we, again, the, the idea is that we need a physical presence in our homeland in this environment, um, and without that. Um, it's going to be a slow roll. Uh, fortunately, we've got a very large contingent of, of professors, associate professors at University of Maryland College Park, who are, have thrown their hat in the ring and they're being very helpful on these topics right now. And uh, I, I hope they don't tire of it or I hope that the administration <laughs> doesn't tell them to cease and desist. Mm -hmm. um, because. You know, if, if a professor is seeking tenure, uh, they don't need anything to distract them from that. True. Uh, because that's their livelihood. Uh, if they don't get tenure, mm -hmm. it's see you later. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we count on them. Right. You know, we count on the goodwill of, of everyone, really. And, you know, I've had a lot of friends here today, a couple of the archaeologists and uh, other people um, that have invited me to do programs and uh, do... Uh, displays uh -huh. and uh, but I, I participate I'm a member of the archaeological society of Maryland not that I want to be an archaeologist but <laughs> I want to be there when they're opening the ground and they're discovering human remains they're discovering artifacts etc and I want to see what they're doing how they're doing it and what they're doing with it once they pull it up and fortunately for me I've been on sites where they have found human remains and because my presence was there they put them back they, in the ground. Right. Fact, now I wonder what would have happened what if I was not there. Exactly. But uh, you know, these are things that we're working on, and uh, we've had some success, and we look forward to keeping that ball rolling. <laughs> so, yeah, anything that can uh, help us. Uh, I've done uh, videos with Merlin uh, Public Television, uh, Prince George Public Television. Um, you know, so. What's her name? Patricia Ballone, who's with them, has done quite a few. Um, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Be coming to the studio and mm -hmm. vid videoing things. Uh, I don't know how much circulation it gets, but uh, the idea is somebody mm -hmm. probably saw it that, mm -hmm. that it had an impact on. Um, all it needs is one. That's all you need <laughs> so, is one. All needs is one. That's all you need is so, one. So you know, we hope to keep the ball rolling and, and hope that uh, you know. Uh, most of this doesn't wind up on the editor's floor. <laughs> uh, none of it will. And, um, I can assure you that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get out. Um, you know, we need we need some of that what I, we call Jedi, some of that justice and equity and diversity and inclusion. You know, even if we can't get a seat at the table, at least let us in the room. Boom.